please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. So let's take a look at the Asian markets. They are mixed in trade as we speak. If you take a look at the Nikkei, that one is down about a tenth of a percent. No big change seen in the dollar yen as against yesterday's close. But remember, these markets are on tenter hooks ahead of the crucial Federal Reserve decision today. The Korean markets, though, uh, you have manufacturers and retailers which are doing well out there. So which uh, is leading to the outperformance of the Korean index, which is up about four tenths of a percent. Both the straits as well as the Taiwanese indices should come up for you. Remember, yesterday in the second half of trade we saw a sell-off in most of the Asian markets and that mirrored the sell-off that we saw in our markets as well. A mixed start as far as the straits and the Taiwanese indices are concerned. The SGX Nifty after an 82 point decline yesterday indicates that we may open on the back foot with a cut of about 9 to 10 points. Okay, well, let's tell you about Wall Street then. The S&P 500 and the Dow closed higher ahead of the Fed Reserve's expected U.S. interest rate hike. Growing optimism that Republican lawmakers would be able to revamp the corporate tax system also boosted sentiment. CNBC's uh, Contessa Brewer gets us a wrap of all what took place on Wall Street. U.S. markets finished the day mixed, with the Dow and S&P closing at record highs. The Dow rallied 118 points. The S&P was up by four and the Nasdaq fell 12 points. The Fed meets today and tomorrow, and 98% of economists surveyed tell CNBC they expect the Fed to hike interest rates. Pepsi says today it has reserved 100 of Tesla's new electric semis, the largest known order of the truck so far. The maker of Mountain Dew and Doritos joined a list of more than a dozen companies placing orders for that big rig, including Walmart and Cisco. Air travel was better in October in the United States. More than 84% of flights were on time because there were no hurricanes to disrupt travel. Hawaiian and Delta had the best on-time performance. And that's the action from the U.S. market. I'll send it back to you. All right, uh, that's the U.S. market action, but uh, the eyes, all eyes rather, will be on the Fed's two-day policy meeting, which ends later today. Widely expected to raise its benchmark rate. Uh, Steve Leesman is here with the survey on what the Fed could do. Last meeting of the year and 98% of the respondents to the CNBC Fed survey think the Federal Reserve will hike to end the year. After that, three rate hikes on average expected in 2018. That'll bring the funds rate back up towards 2%. And that next rate hike next year, the first one happening in March, 67% see the rate hike happening in March. This will be Yellen's apparently last news conference with Jay Powell, the nominee from President Trump. We asked our respondents to compare Yellen and Powell. They think Yellen is stronger in six of the eight categories that we asked about, including economic expertise, economic forecasting, all the way down to leadership, monetary policy. They think Powell is stronger in regulatory expertise and in market knowledge. Put it all together, the overall rating, you can see not too bad for Powell, but he has some work to do to catch up with the reputation of Yellen, especially when it comes to the economy. Okay, and incoming Fed Chair Jerome Powell in an interview earlier has said that the macros in the U.S. economy are supportive for a rate hike. I think the conditions are, are supportive of doing that, but we need to go ahead and have the meeting and listen to each other. We, we generally have a rule, you know, it's, it's a communications rule that we, we're not supposed to be saying exactly what we're going to do before we go in and listen to one another's views. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's also listen in to what the market experts are expecting the Fed to do amid concerns of inflation in the United States. I doubt that uh, Chairwoman Yellen wants too many surprises at her last meeting, but I do think there could be a little upward lift in the dot plot for 2018. We expect rates to probably move up higher here uh, in the year end due to pressures from tax reform prospects and just the general economy here in the U.S. is extremely strong and we got a real hint of inflation in the PPI report. Inflation is just right around the corner. We just haven't seen wage inflation take hold but we think we're on the cusp of that and certainly we'll see more pressures on wages going higher in 2018. We don't see three rate hikes. We see two for sure, three possibly. Uh, it really depends upon the push through, if you may, of wage inflation. We didn't see that even though we had a very strong unemployment report for November. But the labor market here in the U.S. is growing tighter and tighter. And companies are struggling finding available and most importantly 
qualified workers, uh, skilled labor. Uh, and that will ultimately drive up wage inflation, in our opinion. Okay, and as expectations for a Fed rate hike later today is high, here is what the Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan and Boston Fed President Eric Rosengreen had to say earlier in an exclusive with CNBC. I think we ought to be patient. I'm open-minded about December, but I'm not there yet. And, and one of the reasons why, and there was a little, we just heard a little bit of discussion about it, I still believe that um, we're behind our 2% target. And I think the structural forces, the structural headwinds, particularly of technology-enabled disruption, meaning co uh, consumers can use uh, technology to shop for lower prices, technology uh, is increasingly replacing people. It's having a muting effect, I think, on prices. And so I think we can afford to be patient. And so I plan to take a little more time between now and December before I make a judgment. Inflation has been undershooting 2% inflation and it's undershooting both in total and core by a fair bit right now. So um, that gives us the luxury of being a little bit more gradual. I think a gradual increase in interest rates is appropriate. There's a high probability in the markets that we'll be raising mm -hmm. rates in December. That seems appropriate given the information we have now. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see. And the data is a little hard to interpret because the various hurricanes that have been hitting the United States have obviously disrupted not only people living in those areas, but also our data series. But my guess is that if data comes in as I expect, that it would be appropriate to raise rates in December. All right, uh, let's also take a look at how the European markets fared. In fact, among the frontline indices, most of the markets closed higher as investors monitored the U.S. federal policy meeting as well as the upcoming ECB meeting due tomorrow. On the data front, we got the U.K. inflation, which uh, hit a five-year high of 3.1%. Remember, all these frontline indices, apart from uh, the U.K. index, the FTSE, all of them opened in the red to the tune of two-tenths to three-tenths of a percent in the red, and then we saw a sharp recovery across the frontline line indices oil prices to help the oil stocks across the periphery though we did not see that sentiment being shared so mixed sort of close coming in from the irish index the spanish index the FTSE mib to underperform the three frontline indices in the emerging market space though if you take a look at uh, the russian market that one was uh, gaining for the second consecutive session after the move that we saw on oil prices and the brazilian index too gained about one and a half percent Okay, well, in the currency space, the dollar index has risen to its highest level in a month and Treasuries lost ground ahead of the interest rate decision from the Fed Reserve due later today. In the world of commodities, oil prices reversed gains. Brent oil retreats sharply from two-year peak. This after the U.S. Energy Information Administration said it expects U.S. oil production to rise sharply next year. From precious metals, gold has hit its lowest since July before steadying as investors braced for a widely expected U.S. interest rate increase. Well, beware of scams and criminal activity. That's the word coming in from the U.S. market regulator, SEC, to all the Bitcoin enthusiasts. Raising the red flag on cryptocurrencies, the head of the U.S. SEC said, and I quote, if a promoter guarantees returns, if an opportunity sounds too good to be true, or if you are pressured to act quickly, please exercise extreme caution and be aware of the risk that your investment may be lost. End quote. Well, back home on the Lal Street yesterday, the market snapped what was a three-day winning streak after a sharp fall, especially in the last hour of trade. The Nifty ended below 10,240. The Sensex closed over 200 points in the red and the broader markets underperformed, with the mid-cap index ending about eight-tenths of a percent in the red. The Bank Nifty was the biggest laggard, with the index ending over one percent lower in yesterday's trading session. Naveen joins in to tell us all what we need to brace ourselves for today. Naveen, hi, morning, over to you. 
Good morning, Ekta. I'll just begin with where you ended in terms of yesterday's trade. Yeah, we ended at the low point of the day. That seems to a bit of a dampener. But yeah, in today's market, uh, in today's trading session, the macro cues are which will be hogging the limelight. So I'll begin with the IIP data that came in yesterday post market as a weak set of numbers. If you see the industrial growth, that has been seen to be slowing down at 2.2 percent versus 4.2 uh, percent growth on a year-on-year -year basis. And that was majorly led by the uh, weak uh, manufacturing sector data. So th th those th these two factors are expected to have a bearing on the market today. On the other hand, the global macro factors also will be playing an important role. Remember, uh, the Fed Reserve will be coming out with their rates and uh, the consensus is that there will might be a rate hike uh, in FI18 in, in today itself. So tomorrow morning is what, as per Indian time, we will be getting the numbers. So keep an eye on that. On the back of this, taking a look at the global markets, remember Dow Jones, they ended up by close to 50, uh, 5 tenths of a percent. On the other hand, the European indices also, they were up in trade. They ended the trade more than than four, uh, four tenths or five tenths of a percent, in fact. But SGX Nifty, that has been showing more or less a flattish opening for the Indian markets. But talking about the important point is the levels. So if you see right now, our market's eyes between the 20-day moving average as well as the 50-day moving average. So 20-day moving average is 10,254. So any breakout on the upside, that will come in as a positive. On the other hand, the downside seems to be uh, near the 50-day moving average of 10,226. So important point is, where are we breaking out in today's trades? Whether it's on the upside or the downside back to you valid que question there Naveen where are we headed in terms of the upside or the downside a lot of macro cues indeed lined up but let's take it macro micro what are the stocks you're watching out for so Mangalam, I'll begin with Bharti Airtel. Remember, Warburg Pincus yesterday bought close to 20% stake in their Airtel's DTH arm. Out of this 20%, 50% will be sold by Bharti Airtel. So some funds coming in for the company. On the other hand, Interglobe Aviation, uh, this is more of a technical factor, I would say, because remember, as per SEBI norms, they have to reduce the promoter holding. And uh, that is one reason why Acquire Services, they have sold close to 2% in the company. This is the company's idea towards moving uh, towards the 75% mark of uh, promoter motor holding by November 2018. On the other hand, some acquisition coming in for Dr. Lal Path Labs. They have acquired a proprietorship concern that is Satya Pathology. On the other hand, good news coming in for Hindustan Copper. Remember their plant which is shut down at Jharkhand, that has opened up. On the other hand, Century Textiles, some fundraising coming in for this company, much needed I would say rather. Uh, 600 crore is what the company will be gaining per year because they will be giving out their viscose filament yarn business to Grasim. Uh, QIP, remember Syndicate Bank QIP has been announced and the floor price has come in at 88 and a half rupees per share. Coming out with numbers, remember Q2 still we are expecting a few numbers to trickle in and that is what has been coming in terms of specialty restaurants, weak set of numbers, the revenue is down 9% and they have posted a loss of 8.5 crore rupees. On the other hand, Sarla Performance Fibers, clearly cotton price increase has been hitting this company and that has led to a margin decline of close to 700 basis points for Sarla Performance Fibers. On the other hand, Talwarkar business, it clearly seems that more people are heading to the gym and going for Zumba and that is one reason why the revenue is up by close to 10%. But margins, they have increased by 300 basis points at 61%. Expect Talwarkas to be in the green today. Straight back to you. Okay. To focus to some macro data now, the retail inflation for the month of November has accelerated to the highest level seen in the last 15 months, nearly at 5%. And that was because of the rise of vegetable prices. That was the main culprit. Industrial output, on the other hand, slowed down for the month of October. The IIP growth for the month of October coming in at 2.2%, so the lowest in the last three months as the trend shows. Lata Venkatesh is with us. Lata, what do you make of these numbers? 4.88% seems like a significant jump on the CPI, a double whammy? Yes, that's right. Uh 4.88, uh, we got only one uh, respondent to our poll saying 4.88. The bulk of the respondents, the median number was between 4.3 and 4.5. So this 4.9 inflation is definitely something economists and bond dealers were not prepared for. Uh, everyone knew vegetables were pricier, but no one expected that number to come at 22% higher year on year and eggs up 8%. But worse than all this was the core inflation, non-food, non-fuel that is largely services, that's up by 4.86%. Last month's number was, that is October number was 4.6, and people expected maximum 4.65. So 4.86, again, is a bit of a shocker. How will the Reserve Bank react? You know, the Reserve Bank puts out a fan chart that is the most likely trajectory of inflation over the next six months. This number is coming at the higher end of their own band. So now the expectation is that in March, 
2018, that is end of the current financial year, the Reserve Bank's number is 4.7. It may well be 5% in actuality. And this, mind you, doesn't still include the current rise in crude prices. There are some experts who believe that crude prices could be between 70 and 80 dollars next year. So, you know, it's quite possible that uh, there is a rate hike next year. When I asked this question, most economists poo pooed that fear. They said there's no rate hike in 2018 because demand is still very weak in India. It's only the base effect. These are all demonetization months as base. And therefore, the inflation number is looking a little exaggerated. By the time we come to maybe uh, June, July, next, uh, uh, August uh, next year, things will start normalizing. This is also the HRA impact of the 7th Pay Commission. The uh, uh, fear will be realized when bond markets open. Uh, they closed at 7.17. Maybe there will be a knee-jerk reaction to 7 quarter. But uh, ex experts, both bond dealers and economists think most of the bad news is priced in. So bad number, but not terribly bad repercussions. So, uh, here's a slice of the opinion we got from some leading economists. I will not go to the extent of any rate hikes at least in 2018 because the markets also and the central bank also needs to take into account the IIP numbers and uh, as as we know the yield even though the yields have topped 7.2 percent I think there is also evidence that the yields are ex are to a large extent determined by the real uh, economy factors. For example, IIP growth is one of them. So the market will also take into account the weak IIP growth and the fact that the IIP actually has been started to decline from the last two months, from a 4% level to 2.2% in the current level. My sense is that January to June of the calendar year next year could be a little bit unfavorable in terms of the inflation trajectory. Some prints in excess of 5% possibly, but as July to December, is a time when the inflation prints could actually be a little bit favorable to the government, uh, to the RBI and the government. So therefore, I think the RBI should stay put for this purpose. And given the fact that real rate of interest at significantly high levels, there is enough cushion for the RBI to weather this crisis, and let and weather this uh, weather this data and stay put for a significant uh, for maybe for the rest of FY8, FY19 or so. It's becoming uh, quite difficult in terms of uh, estimating the trajectory of the uh, inflation. There could be a positive imp implication for the, from the GST perspective and the rate reduction coming into December. Uh, onion prices and some uh, bits of vegetable prices have, have started to cool off. So we really need to sort of uh, factor in how much of cooling happens on the vegetable prices because the biggest shocker in this particular uh, inflation reading was the vegetable prices. We had factored in a number of 4.5%, so yes, it is a bit higher than what we had expected. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, in terms of uh, what has not come in line with our expectation is, is the core category and, uh, you know, things uh, apart from food. Because vegetable prices and also egg and, you know, other protein-related item, mutton, I think, we, we were actually expecting a, a good, good substantial upside risk on that front. Uh, this also means that, uh, you know, the GST tax rate uh, cuts, which were announced for some of the important items, uh, which really belong in the core category, Mm -hmm. That has not really transpired, and I think it, it maybe maybe it will come back in December because this happened in between the months. So maybe in December we can expect coal to again marginally soften. But I think uh, the upside in coal really poses some worry.